Hey there, Sam. Here's what we're going to build in this lesson. We're here at the web page. I'll get a question asking me if I want an ice cream. If I click on OK, I'll get an ice cream. If I click on Cancel, however, I'll get too bad. Let's dive into the code straight away. We're going to learn something called the if statement, which is very useful to perform a check and conditionally execute code. Suppose we have a number and let's set the value of it to 1. Now, I want to perform a check to see whether the variable number is equal to 1 or not. And I want to console out different messages correspondingly. To do this, we can use the if statement. To write the if statement, we type in if round bracket. And here is where we put in the check. So we want to check if number is equal to 1. The triple equal sign is what we call the comparison operator. It compares two value. And if both of them are equal, then it will be evaluated to true, otherwise false. And after that, we'll put in curly braces. And here we put in what should we do if this condition passed. So if the number is equal to 1, we'll console log out, it is the 1. And after the curly braces, we can put in an else keyword and another curly braces. And here's where we put in if the condition failed, what should we do? So if the number is not equal to 1, we'll print out not the 1. And through the magic of live server, our browser is already printing out it is the 1 because our number is 1. It reads like English, right? So we're just saying, if the number is equal to 1, then we run the code inside the curly braces, which is printing out it is the 1. Otherwise, we'll run whatever is written inside the else block. So if we change the number equals to something else, we should see not the 1. There is another type of comparison operator, which is the double equal sign. Now the difference between the double equal and triple equal is that the double equal only checks for the value, but a triple equal would check for the value and also the data type. I'll show you what I mean. If I say number one is double equal to the string one, what do you think would happen? Is that true? Let's find out. We console log out something, and we did see the console log in the browser. So that is true. And again, the reason is because double equal only checks for the value, and the number one and the string one has the same value, so therefore it will evaluate it to true. Now, what if I change the double equal to triple equal? Would we still see the console log in the browser? The answer is no, because the triple equal will also check for the type, and the number is not the same as the string, so the comparison is false. We should always, always use the triple equal sign when we're doing a comparison. Why? Because I can almost guarantee you that the double equal sign will introduce you a lot of bugs to your program. Unless you like more surprises in your life, I would say try to avoid the double equal sign as much as possible. If we want to check if something is not equal to the other, we can use the exclamation mark. The exclamation mark stands for not. If we want to check if something is not equal to something, we have two variants again, the exclamation mark equal and exclamation mark double equal. And similar to the equal variant, the one with the single equal checks for value only and the double equal checks for value and type. So if we check number one is not single equal to the string one, this condition is false because the value are the same. If we put in double equal, however, this condition is now true. And again, because the double equal checks for the type as well. We can also check whether one value is greater or lesser than one another by using the angle bracket, just like math. Just for a quick demo, I can type in if two is less than five, which will always be true, we'll print out less and we do see it in the browser. All right, time to create our ice cream question. To ask the question, we can use the confirm function. And we'll set a response to a variable. The result of a confirm function is always boolean. If the user click on the OK button, it will be true. If the user click on cancel, it will be false. So that means we can use a response directly inside a if statement. So if the response is true, we'll alert, here you go, and an ice cream emoji. Otherwise, we'll alert too bad. You can search for emojis on Emojipedia. The link is in the description. Let's try the program. When I reload the page, it asks me the question and I say yes and I get an ice cream. Refresh the page again and I say no this time, I get too bad. If we want to handle different situation, we can use the else if statement. For example, let's say I want to ask a user a math question. What is 1 plus 5? If the user answer it correctly, we'll alert wonderful. I want to give a different error message if the user didn't answer anything. What I can do, I can use an else if statement to check for a secondary condition. In this case, if the answer is equal to your empty string, we'll alert, you didn't even try. And finally, if the user gave a wrong answer, we'll print out, whoops, try again. So here we're handling two different scenarios. We can put in as many else if statement as we want. Let's try to run the code. If I don't enter anything, the second block will run. It will alert, you didn't even try. If I enter the wrong answer, the else block will run, which will say, whoops, try again. 
If I enter the correct answer, the first block will run, which will say, wonderful. We can combine conditions together using the AND operator, which is the double ampersand symbol, and the OR operator, which is the double pipe symbol. Let's take a look at the demo. Let's say I want to create a login system, which requires the username and password. I will let the user in under two conditions. Either the username is Sam and password is secret, or the username is admin and I don't care about the password. To build this condition, I can check the username is equal to Sam and password is equal to secret. So that should satisfy condition number one. So I'm going to wrap condition number one with a round bracket to treat them as a group. Then I'm going to add condition number two. So I'll add an all operator. Username is equal to admin. So either one of these conditions passes, I will alert welcome. Otherwise, I will alert nope. Let's test the program. So if I type in Sam as username and password as secret, I'll get welcome. If I type in admin as username and some garbage for password, I still get welcome. If I type in garbage for username and password, I'll get nope. Now this if statement looks a little bit complicated. We can make it easier to read by storing the condition as a variable. Since the condition will be evaluated as a boolean, as a programming convention, we always start our boolean variable with the word is. By using this convention, we can easily tell whether a variable is a boolean or not. So in our case here, we can name our variable as is credential valid. And now our if statement looks much cleaner and reads more like English. Every data type has its own truth value. Let's go through them one by one. I'm going to create a dummy variable called check, which I'll be using it for checking purposes. For numbers, everything is truthfully except for 0. For example, if I set check to be 12, and I put it in inside a if statement, the true block will run. If I change it to 0, however, the false block will run. All strings are true except for empty string. So if I set check to be ABC, the truth block will run. And if I set it to an empty string, the false block will run. Any array is truthy, including empty array. So if I set check to be an array, the truth block will run. And the same applies to object. Undefined is falsy. Now is falsy. And none is falsy as well. Why are these important? Because sometimes we can use these properties to shorten our code. For example, if we go back to the math question, in the else if condition, we can shorten it to exclamation mark answer. Because if answer is an empty string, it will be falsy, and we can put an exclamation mark before it to convert it into true. So that will run the else if block. Key takeaway for this lesson, if statement allow us to conditionally execute code. We should always use the triple equal sign to check for equality. We can combine conditions together using the AND and OR operators. Conditions can be grouped using the round bracket. And finally, all data has a default truth value. There is quite a bit to take in in this lesson. Make sure you get comfortable with the concept before moving on. I'll see you again shortly. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for the support.